In 1868, the Connecticut General Assembly passed the charter to permit the erection of the Hazardville Institute, allowing Colonel Hazard to build a home devoted to moral and intellectual improvement in the village of Hazardville. The Hazardville Institute became a school, a library, and a meeting place for generations of residents of Hazardville, functioning as a sports facility, a movie house, a dance academy, a polling place, and the community hall for annual banquets. And during World War I, the Red Cross held classes at the Institute. The Hazardville Institute Conservancy recognizes this historic landmark's worth and has spearheaded the Hazardville Institute's current extensive renovation. These current longtime residents grew up in Hazardville and will tell us how important the Institute was to their community. The Institute was started in 1869. Is that the date you have? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Colonel Hazard came over here to look for a place to start the powder mill. Yes. And he needed ash trees. And he needed certain yeah, other kinds of stuff, finder. and he, he decided Skinnico was the place to have it. And that's where he and built he it. So, uh, when they built, they decided to build the institute in his honor and name it, you know, the Hazardville Institute. <coughs> and the sad thing was, he died just before they got it finished. Colonel Hazard, the one that started the powder mill. Also, when I was in second grade, they started up a library at the Institute. Yeah. And I remember, I think we went down as a class, and we walked down to the yeah. Institute, and uh, we were allowed to take out, what, two books? And we walked back, the whole class together. I think the most important function that the institute had was the library. That's, uh, really, because it was there for many years and it was the only thing we had in the Asbury Bridge. Yeah. That Dr. Stowe, he was a dentist, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, my father, uh, my grandfather, he was a, a janitor in, in one of the Springfield libraries. So when they discarded the books, he gave, my father would bring them down and that's, that's, Oh. Kind of how they set the library in Enfield or Hazardville. Does anybody remember Dr. Stowe? I what his name was. Yeah. <coughs> he used to show movies down at the yes. Institute. Yes. Mm -hmm. Getting back to Dr. Stowe, uh, he also showed movies on Saturday. You know, we kids loved those shows. And they were in serial movies, so you didn't want to miss one week because you'd lose the, uh, the uh, theme of the whole what was going on, you know? Wednesday afternoon, Dr. Stowe would have the, the movies you know, when he was a young fella. And I don't know, it would be 90 something, I suppose. But all the kids were in there one afternoon, and Dr. Stowe was showing the film. And it was a cowboy and Indian thing. So the cowboy had the Indian tied up to the tree. <laughs> and he takes his gun out, and he's going to shoot the Indian. Well, the film broke. <laughs> so, and Golan. And this is 60, 70 years after that. He says, hey, you know, I wonder if that cowboy shot that Indian or not. <laughs> so he says, what happened is, he says, we all ran down a fire escape. You all know where that is. We all ran down a fire escape and had a snowball fight. And that was that story. How many people came? Were there? It was crowded. Yeah. Because it was, you couldn't have. You had to have gas coupons to, to drive around for World War II, and that Dad had the car, so you had to, and it was too. You couldn't go. Couldn't go to the movies. The institute was what we had because we couldn't afford to go to Thompson to go to the movies. So we spent an awful lot of time in the institute in a variety of ways. And how many people remember Fourth of July? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I remember getting oh, up that was it. in the morning and looking at the, the lawn and yep. 
<coughs> little pieces of the, a paper all over for my cannons, you know. Right. How about doctors? And some of those cannons were loud. Yeah, and right. Main Street, all night long, fireworks are going off all the time, up and down the street, you know. Oh, yeah. They were burning tires left and right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fire whistle would blow, uh, going down to this other end of the town. Yeah. And they sing you go down the other end of the town, then another another alarm would come in. You gotta go the other. Fire trucks are going back and forth. Yeah. We used to have Fourth of July parades every year. Yeah. Until it says, oh, now we can't. We'll just have the Thompson one, you know. But I remember. I mean, we lived for that. Fourth of July was it. We lived for it all year. <laughs> all the goings on. <laughs> Can I have two, five cents so I can get some more? Um, the things you put in the fake gun, what do you call them? Oh, caps. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so long ago, the caps that you put in. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with that, and then the stuff that makes the worms. Yeah, why are these all that? <laughs> we would go upstairs and, and bob for apples, and then Dr. Stowe would show a movie after. Yeah. When the kids got all done bobbing for the apples, you know, <laughs> or they had to catch them all. <laughs> was that, you know, a certain time of year, just when there oh, were apples around? I think it was around Halloween. Yeah. Oh, Halloween, okay. We used to have a parade in Hatterfield yes. for Halloween, and then we'd come to the Institute and have a party, and then they would tell us, now you go straight home, and we'll call you if your, if your costume won a prize. So we did. And it was later, years later, that I realized what they really meant was go straight home, don't wax any windows, and don't cut any clotheslines. <laughs> <laughs> Took all the fun away. <laughs> I remember at the Institute when Burgess used to hold Farm Hall or McCormick Daring shows there they bring in the factory and i can remember the far two farm halls sitting out in the, on the grass in between the uh, walkway to the main door and uh, of course the factory would be in there and be uh, telling the farmers uh, what new products were coming out and once a year they used to have a program down at the Institute where they entertained the farmers, tried to, you know, have speakers and sell farm equipment. And uh, I remember going to that. And they used to show a funny movie, you know, about broken down farms and everything that would go wrong. And it was funny, you know, we all kids enjoyed that. And so, yeah. And also my father was, uh something to do with voting, register of voters or something way back. And they used to vote at the, inside the, in the Institute. And uh, I can remember my father with the big sheets with all the names on the ballots and uh, all that. Uh, remember that? Your dad used to be a fireman, right? Fire, fire, call Bill McGuire. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the kids heard that all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was the same here as well. Billy McGuire had a flat tire going to the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, uh, in the basement of the old Institute of Arts. It used to be a big, uh, big stove, big furnace down there. Yes. Yeah. And you get the uh, city people in there. I know on the back there was a brook. Oh yeah. Yes. And it I don't know if it goes underneath the institute. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it goes and, under the road. And it goes under the road. The road. Uh, over by locks. And it has a garage. Arch. Yep. And we go out through the Terry Brook is the name of it? I don't know. I know I know where it goes under the scanner. I thought the brook went right through the cellar, but I'm not sure. It did. Yeah. Well, it did. It did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was curious if anybody ever saw it or ever went down into to the basement enough to see the uh, arch. Uh, I, the arch, right? They used to, and they used to try to go as far as they could, like my brother and John and that group. 
and you know, they go down. Mm. It would go right down the skin. Yeah. But all underground? Pretty much. Well, on the Institute there, uh, they yeah. played basketball quite a bit in the old days. Mm -hmm. And my mother-in-law, Mary Nolesquist, we have pictures of her playing basketball. Oh, yeah? Yeah, up there in yeah. the top of uh, the Institute. Do you have those pictures? Because they'd be great for the Institute. Yeah. You got pictures of that? Of, of Mary, yeah, my Mary Nolesquist, my uh, yeah, mother-in-law, well, she's deceased, you know. So there was a girls' team, or they would play? Uh, I'm not sure. It was, was the, it was the women's play. basketball team, and oh, they used to practice down in the institute. Huh? Did you ever go to their games, or? No. No? <laughs> but I knew some of the people that, you know, were practicing there. Yeah. It was the right-hand side. The left-hand side was the library and the stairs that were horrible. Mm. They were very steep? Or yes, yes, they sure. were. Wide and, wide and steep. Yep. Yeah. We were Girl Scouts, and when they would have a minstrel show or a play or something, um, we would sell fudge during intermission. I don't remember that. <laughs> well, you're just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, for being here tonight, telling us uh, some stories. Yeah, thank you for letting us talk. <laughs>